as we have mentioned, our focus today is management forms, management forms, or you can say forms of management, whichever way you want to put it is fine, forms of management or management forms. Okay, now by way of learning outcome, we you should be able to explain why managers are important to organizations. You should be able to tell who managers are and what they do, right? And also where they work. Then describe the functions, the roles and skills of managers. And also be able to identify and describe the factors that are reshaping and redefining the job of managers. And also be able to explain the value of studying management, okay? How important is it for you to study management? Now, the clue I've been giving to all your colleagues in our classes is that these learning outcomes, okay? So you should, you should use these learning outcomes to form questions. If you are able to answer these questions, I'm telling you that there is no exam that will come that you can pass. So don't just look at them as learning outcome. Use them to form questions. For example, uh, describe factors that are reshaping. If you can answer that question, you can pass the exam because these are the same things that we use to prepare questions. Okay. So I'm giving you a clue about how to study, how to learn. Okay. Now let's look at the contents of our discussion for, for today, right? So we're going to look at functions of management, types of managers, management levels and skills, managerial roles, differences among the hierarchical levels of management, then management as a science and management as an art. To start with, okay, to start with, okay? I want us to start with I want us to start with this discussion. Would you say management is a science or management is an art? Would you say management is a science or management is an art? I'm going to give you two to three minutes. Think about it. You can do your own research and raise your hand. So I will invite you to give your submission yeah. or to give your input, okay? Right. So please think about it for two minutes and then you will come and share your submission with us, okay? Two minutes.
Okay, so um, please raise your hand and I will invite you to make your submission. Um, Zoom user, please change your name before you can speak in the class, okay? Change your name, right? Uh, we can't recognize anybody like Zoom user. Change your name quick. If we say management is a science, okay? Everything that is scientific goes through a certain procedure, okay? So it's about procedure. It's about methodology, okay? Methodology. It's about process. Mm -hmm. Yes, process. It's about being systematic. Okay, being systematic. So when we say something is scientific, this is what we are trying to preach, that it has gone through a certain procedure. Okay, it has gone through a certain procedure. So the outcome, the outcome that we have, okay, can be repeated. If you go through a certain procedure to arrive at an outcome, when I go through the same procedure, I should be able to arrive at the same or a similar, very similar outcome. For example, you go through procedure or process one, two, three, four, five, and as a result, you were able to produce a mobile phone. If I follow the same procedure with all things equal, okay, all things equal, if I follow the same procedure, I should be able to get the same results or the same outcome. If you follow a particular approach to making decisions, when I use the same approach, all things equal, I should be able to arrive at the same decision. So in that sense, Management is also a science because management also follows a certain method, a certain process or procedure. For example, the POLC that we have discussed, okay, the POLC is a process. The process starts with planning and then we go to organizing, followed by leading and yeah. controlling. Okay. Those are the processes that managers follow so that managers can be sure of a certain outcome for the organization. When we're talking about art, so we are talking about creativity, right? We are talking about skills. We are also trying to talk about experience. We are talking about intuition. Mm -hmm. We are talking about intuition. These are the things that characterize an art, creativity, skills, experience, intuition. Now, managers don't only take decisions based on science, based on data. Sometimes management managers take decisions based on feelings, okay? Based on feelings, right? Based on perceptions. Based on their own opinion, their own experiences. Let me give you an example. So let's say that in the organization, three years ago, in the month of June, you were able to sell about 10,000 pieces of mobile phones. Two years ago, you were able to sell 10,000 pieces of mobile phones in the month of June. Last year, a year ago, you were able to sell 10,000 pieces of mobile phones in the month of June. Then this year, you are expecting that if three years ago, we were able to do it. Two years ago, we did. Last year, we did. It means that this year we can do, we should be able to do 10,000 and above. 
That is what the data is saying. That is scientific. It's very objective. However, however, as a manager, you live in the economy. You live in the community. All the issues about IMF, you are aware. You are aware about the issues of exchange rates. You are aware about the issues of prices of goods and services in the country. You are aware about the issues of fuel prices, inflation. You are aware of everything. So if similar conditions that are prevailing now did not prevail three to one year ago, it means that as based on your experience, based on your understanding of the economic situation, even though the, by the data, we should be able to sell 10,000 units of mobile phones in the month of June, you will say that, no, this is not possible. We need to lower our target. We need to lower our expectation because it might not be possible because the conditions this year, a lot of people are complaining. They don't have money. So how do we expect to sell the same number of mobile phones in the month of June? This will be based on your feelings, your perception about the situation, your experience of what is going on in the environment. Okay, so that at that point, you are not using the data to take a decision. Yes, the data has what it is saying. If you are to, to apply the data, you say, okay, next month we are selling 10,000 phones and you start putting pressure on the salespeople, right? Hey, you have to sell 10,000 phones and people will come under so much pressure. But look at the situation now. Is it the same as was then? Or sometimes, last three years we did 10,000, last year, two years we did, last year we did. This year, maybe the exchange rate has gone down about um, one Ghana CD to $2, right? Or $2, uh, we get one Ghana CD. Okay, it means that things are going to be much, much, much cheaper as against what we have now about 10 point something to one, one, uh, one dollar, right? So if the exchange rate will be so favorable, it means that prices of goods and services will be very cheap. So we could even sell more than 10,000 mobile phones. So this is how to understand what managers are what managers do in terms of being scientific and in terms of being artistic, okay, in their, in their delivery, right? So we can say that management is both a science and it is also an art. A science because management or managers follow scientific processes, approaches, procedures to arrive at the outcomes that they want to arrive at the decisions that they want, to arrive at the, the, the productivity that they want, even the people that they need to employ. It follows a certain scientific process or procedure, right? Great. So with this um, background, with this discussion point, let's move on to look at um, why are managers important? Why are managers important? Managers are important because three things, okay? Three things. Now look at this. Look at these three things, okay? We're talking about uncertainty, complexity of the times. We're talking about the chaotic nature of the times. These are the issues that are driving the environment now. There is so much uncertainty. We don't know. Somebody was telling me that, oh, the dollar is going to go down, very, very down, okay? And the person also told me after the election next year, the dollar is going to go up again. Uncertainty. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So if you are a business and you live in an environment that there is so much uncertainty, you're not so sure how things are going to be right? It makes it very difficult for the organization. Things are very, very complex. 
the kind of people organizations are dealing with. They are not the same people as was 20, 30 years ago. Now there are many, what many people we call the uh, Generation Z. We have a lot of Generation Z people in the environment, in the working environment. And these people, they have their own mindset compared to 20, 30 years ago, the kind of people we had as employees, right? Or if you look at the age, those that are between 25 and 35, they have their own mindset. Those that are 35 and above, they also think differently. So you are, you are managing a complex set of people, right? And that make that calls for skills, that calls for certain capabilities of managers. So managers become very, very important to deal with such situation or such an environment. Now, this means that managerial skills and abilities are very important to get things done. Managers show the way, they direct, they lead so that things can go the way they want it. The kind of productivity that is required, okay, calls for managers who will be able to have a good and sound relationship with employees. And managers have good and sound relationship with their employees or their subordinates. They can be sure of what? A higher level of productivity. They can be sure of what? Loyalty. They can be sure of employees who are engaged with their work. They can be sure of employees who are satisfied with their jobs. So the quality of employees that we have, employees who can get us the result that we want, requires that managers have a very good and sound relationship with these employees, okay? Mind you, managers get things done through people. Managers get things done through people. And if managers get this done through people and they don't have a very good way of managing the people, it means that they can't get the things that they want done. Okay, so managers are important. Who then are managers? If you follow what I said earlier, managers are people or those who get things done through people, bottom line. Managers also coordinate and they oversee the work activities of other people to achieve the goals of the organization. That is what managers are. That is who managers are. There are different classes of managers. So what are the differences in managers? The differences are according to the levels. So we have the the lower level or the first line managers. These managers deal directly with the employees, the non-managerial employees. By the way, in an organization, when we say employees, everyone who works in an organization is an employee. The CEO is an employee, okay? The managing director, the president, the general manager, they are all employees. But sometimes we use employees advisedly to refer to the junior officers who are not managers, okay? So we are saying that first level managers, they manage the non-managerial staff or employees. Then we have the middle level managers who manage the work of first line managers or the managers at the lower level. Then we have top managers. We can also say these are the corporate managers. Those are the, at the highest level, at the top level of the organization. The ultimate responsibility of the organization reside with such people. They take 
the most difficult and serious decisions about the organization. They are the people who come up with a corporate strategy or the business strategy of the organization. We call them top managers, top managers, okay? Now, if you look at this pyramid framework, okay, levels of management. So what we have said is there are non-managerial employees and these are the majority. They are large in numbers. For example, I am just one person. Look at how many students I'm dealing with, okay? How many students? Right now, we have over 100 students on this platform. In fact, you are more than that. Some didn't show up, okay? So, so many people that I, I have to deal with, just one person, right? So, if we put it in the organizational setting and you are the non-managerial employees, you are in the majority, you are many. How many lecturers do we have, right? They are the first line managers who directly deal with the students. Then we have those who manage the lecturers. So we have HODs, right? We have HODs in various departments. The HODs manage the lecturers. Then we have the deans and we have the provost and we have pro vice chancellor and various directors up to the vice chancellor, top level. So the executive committee of the university, right? So people who take the serious decisions, the big, big, big decisions that affect all levels of the organization. Those are the corporate level managers, okay? So you know who managers are. You know why managers are important. You know different levels of managers that we have in an organization. Where do managers work? Simple. They work in an organization. And by organization, we are talking about a unit, okay? A unit where a deliberate arrangement of people who have been assembled to accomplish specific purpose, specific goal for that unit, for that organization. And for every organization, there are basic basic characteristics. Last week, we saw some of the characteristics. We are going to see them again. But I'm saying that there are some basic characteristics. That's why we say common, okay? It doesn't matter the size. It doesn't matter the level of organization, the, the number of people, it doesn't matter. These ones are common to all organizations. One, a distinct purpose. Every organization has a distinct purpose. That is why organizations write their mission statements to tell us their purpose, why they exist, why what they exist to do. Yeah. Then we also have people. You can't talk about an organization without people, whether one person or one million people, it doesn't matter. <laughs> people is people, okay? Then deliberate structure. Whether small business, one-man business, partnership, whatever, there must be a structure within which things operate, within which communication is conducted. The business activities are conducted. Otherwise, there is confusion. We can't get the kind of results that we want. So lastly, these are the characteristics of, of an organization that we spoke about made up of people, there are managers, they have a common goal, there is substitution of personnel. So people come in, they go, right? People go and others come in. There is a structure. There are rules and regulations, policies that organizations work with, okay? Now, so these are the common characteristics. I call it fundamental, okay? Fundamental characteristics of organizations, the extent purpose, the library structure and people, right? So if we know why managers are important, we know where managers work, we know different levels of managers, 
then what do managers do? They manage. And by managing, we are talking about con coordinating and overseeing the work activities of others so that their activities are completed efficiently and effectively. When managers are coordinating, when managers are overseeing their work, it's because they want that the activities that other people are doing are completed efficiently and effectively. So the question to you is, what is efficiency and what is effectiveness? I need three people to give their submission. What is efficiency and what is effectiveness? What is efficiency? What is effectiveness? Three people to tell us quickly. What is efficiency and what is effectiveness? I need three people to make a submission. Raise your hand. Yes. Okay. So let's talk. Let's allow one, 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 six, nine, five, seven. Go ahead. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I will talk about efficiency. Okay. Of which I would simply explain it as um getting the most outputs. Getting the most output um, from the least amount of input given. Okay. All right. So that's efficiency. Let's let's ask um, MFA. Okay. So say I'm explaining both efficiency and effectiveness. Okay. So when we talk of efficiency, is the ability to use mineral resources to achieve maximum or desired output. But MFA, what if, what if the, the resources are not mineral resources? Okay, so, okay, so let me eliminate the mineral resources and do it resources. Okay. So it's the ability to use resources to achieve maximum output to help the organization to achieve its goals. Okay. Then when we talk about effectiveness, it's for effectiveness is the ability to accomplish organizational goals with a given resources. Okay. Okay, so I saw uh, someone. Sir, uh, please, I want to explain the efficiency and the distinct effectiveness. Okay. So efficiency is the ability to produce, to produce with available resources within a period of time to produce some uh, to produce goods or to produce to produce yeah let me say to produce whilst the effectiveness is the ability of a person to produce the thing in a better way so the first one what exactly were you explaining i thought you were explaining i was explaining the efficiency okay the ability to produce something with available resources okay within a possible period of time and effort okay. while the effectiveness is the ability of the of the person to produce the thing in a better way in a better result okay all right let me ask um, uh, norris norris Hello, sir. Yes, sir. This I'm I'm explaining the uh, the effectiveness. Okay. Uh, effect, uh, effectiveness is when uh, managers do the right tasks and complete activities to achieve uh, an organizational goal. Okay. Okay. All right. So thank you very much, everyone, of you for your. Con contributions okay right now for example if i have been given 10000 ghana cd to produce five bicycles 
I have been given 10,000 Ghana CD to produce five bicycles. I, I have been able to use the 10,000 Ghana to, to produce five bicycles. That is one scenario. Then another person was given 10,000 Ghana to produce five bicycles. But the person used 9,000 to produce five bicycles. Now tell me, which of these two people is efficient and which of them is effective? Raise your hand and let me hear you. These two scenarios, the same amount of money, one person was able to use the same amount to produce five bicycles. The other person used less, 9,000, to produce five bicycles. Which of them is efficient? Which of them is effective? Uh, Lillian, let's go to Lillian, then we'll come to um, Kumi and then Laurentia. Sir, please, with um, the person who used the same and um, we'll use the same amount of money to produce the required um, item, the, the required bicycle, did it um, effectively. Then the person who used uh, nine, uh, the lesser amount of money to produce the same um, bicycle, number of bicycle, um, you, uh, did it affect uh, efficiency? Okay, let me ask your friends whether they agree with you. Um, do you agree with Lillian? Samuel. Sir, please, I agree with Lillian. Okay, Laurentia, do you agree yeah. too? Yes, please. Oh, you all agree? Yes, sir. Okay, that's fine then. All right, so as, as uh, Lillian has explained, which has been agreed to by your other uh, colleagues, they are very they are very right okay so that is what efficiency and effectiveness are about once the goal is to get five bicycles with a certain amount of resources if i get you the number of bicycles with that amount i'm i'm, I'm effective because i've i've delivered i've done the right thing the right thing is to what produce five bicycles with 10,000 Ghana, and I did. But somebody was given 10,000 Ghana, and the person has used 9,000 to give us five bicycles, meaning that we have made a savings of what? 1,000 Ghana seed. That person, the second person who used 9,000, is what? Efficient. It means that you cannot be efficient without being effective. Mm -hmm. You cannot be efficient without being effective. If you say that you are eff efficient, efficient, then you are also effective. So you can't say that, oh, I used 9,000 to produce three bicycles. That doesn't mean you are, you, are, you, are what? you are efficient or you are effective. No, you should get the goal but you prove that you have used less resources. And so when managers are working, they are coordinating and overseeing, that is a target. Not that you should just be effective, but that you should be efficient. Samuel, do you have a question? Yes, sir. Okay, please ask. I want to ask that, what if the efficiency leads to like poor production or no quality of production? Ah uh, no, Samuel. What we are talking about is all things equal. Ah uh, okay. Yes, the same level of quality. Okay, we are talking about the same level of quality. Okay, say. So. Yes, same level of quality. Otherwise, you can't say you are efficient if you are producing poor products and you are using less amount. That is not efficiency. That is not efficiency. And that is also not even effective. So you are operating below your capacity, right? That, that, is, that is different. Okay. Now, we have, I'm going to now talk about three things, okay? We have what we call functions of management or managerial functions. 
Then we also have what we call managerial roles. Then we have management skills or skills of management. That is the next discussion that I'm going to have. Talking about the functions, the same framework which we discussed last week, which we have been mentioning many times, we, they, they are also known as what? The functions of management. The functions of management. The things that managers use what to carry out their activities. So they plan. And when managers are planning, what do they do? They define the goals that they want. They establish strategies to achieve the goals. So for, for each goal, you have to tell us how you can achieve each of the goals. So if you have 10 goals, each of them, how are we going to carry it out? Then they develop what? Plans to integrate, okay? those goals and they coordinate activity. So by planning, that's what managers do. In terms of organizing, managers are in and they structure the work to accomplish organizational goals. How do we structure the work? It's based on the structure of the organizations. So they have to arrange. They arrange the people. They put people on schedule. So I know at this time I have to teach you right? So everything is what? It's coordinated. It's arranged. There is a structure. At this time, this person is teaching. The other class is, is not teaching. The other class is, is on break. So we can what? achieve the goals. Within the four years, all the courses that you need to take, you should have taken them. If there is no structure of work, we can't be sure of achieving the goals. Then managers lead. They work with and through people to accomplish the goals. They need to understand people. They need to understand the emotions of people. They need to understand the perceptions of people. They need to understand diversity in the organization. They need to know moods of people. These are very important. What are the things that they can do to make people satisfied with their jobs? To make people love the job they do? Right, I'll come to you, um, and have now, okay. Then controlling. So when they are controlling, they monitor the task. Managers don't give you task and go and sleep. If you are a manager, you don't give task and go and sit by the beach and say, "I'm relaxing, I'm enjoying myself," thinking that by the time you come, the results, the result is cooked. No, you will get what you don't want. So you monitor. You collect data, you gather information, you compare. Okay, what were the goals that were established from the start? You give the people the KPI, the key performance indicators, what you expect them to do, what is average performance, what is low performance, what is high performance. Then at the end, you compare. Where are the differences? If there are differences, you try to find the missing link. You try to find the gap, what exactly happened. Then you correct. The process starts again. Let's welcome Nanabina's question. Nanabina. Sir, please. Um, some of my colleagues want to join the group, but they are saying the link is not correct. And then some people were like, they were in the group, and then their network was bad, so they left and they, they are unable to join again. Right, so these are the functions of managers, okay? Now, we're talking about the managerial role. I said I was going to deal with three things, the functions, the roles, and the skills. We have looked at the function. Those are the, the four, planning, organizing, controlling, and leading, okay? Uh, leading and controlling. Now we're talking about management roles or managerial roles. There are, there are 10, 10 roles that were identified by Mainsbury. Mainsbury, okay, 10 roles that are carried out by managers. Those 10 roles have been grouped or categorized into three. So we have interpersonal roles. 
we have informational roles and we have decisional roles. Mainsberg identified 10 roles that managers are expected to play. These 10 roles have been grouped into three. Interpersonal roles, informational roles, and decisional roles. Let's look at how they have been grouped. So under interpersonal roles, we have managers playing the role of figurehead. So we refer to them, right? We refer to them in every situation. We refer to the manager. If there are confusions, we refer to the manager, right? Managers are leaders. We look up to them. They give us the direction that we should go. In fact, managers define the culture of the organization for us. They are the leaders, right? Then managers are also, they also act as liaison, right? Liaison, they serve as a link between the employees. So if, if I have a problem with my fellow employee, I can report it to the manager and the manager will invite us and try to solve the problem, try to uh, find out what is, is happening. Between the organization and other organizations also, between the non-managerial and the top management, right? So managers act as what well liaison. In terms of informational roles, managers monitor. So I told you that when you are controlling, you don't just go and sleep. You monitor what is going on, right? Then managers also disseminate. So you are the manager. You know the plan. If you don't communicate the plan to me, how do you expect me to perform? You know the policy. You are not communicating the policy. How do you expect me to put, to put uh, in my best effort, right? So managers disseminate, okay? They are also the spokespersons of the organization. And I've been advising you that if you are work in an organization, when something happens in the organization, you are not expected to go and do public speeches. Don't say that, yes, I was there. The fact that you were there doesn't mean you should go and talk about what happened because you don't have that role. And I was sharing with some of your friends something that happened about four years ago in, in, in Hope. The STC station was attacked by some insurgent people. And when the attack happened, there was one of the bus drivers who was there at the, in the night. Mind you, in the night, the managers were not there. They had closed from work and the attack happened. So in the morning, the media people went there to do some interviews. And one of the drivers who was there, when they wanted to interview, he said that he will not speak because he does not have the permission of management. Managers, the management of the company has not even, you know, sat down to look at the issue that came and, and how they are going to communicate to the public. And when I heard it on the radio, I was listening to Adum FM. I said to myself, this is very brilliant. This, I, I love this driver because what he has done is very professional. Then they went and interviewed the MC because it's about the security of the town. So they interviewed the MC. And after the MC spoke, he now told the driver that he should speak. So at that point, the driver was like under force. He was compelled to speak. And I really got angry because what the MCA did was very wrong. The driver does not work under the MC. The MCA should have waited for the management of the organization. So I'm saying that when you work in an organization and you don't have the permission of the organization, don't go and make public speeches on behalf of the organization, you will be in trouble. As for the media, they will listen to you, but you will find trouble with your organization. So be careful. 
it is the role of what? Managers. So the final category is decisional roles. So here, managers decide how to use the resources. That's where we are talking about controlling. They take the decision as entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs take decision how, where and how to place their resources so that they can what? They can get more profits. So that's what managers also do. Take decisions as to how to use the resources of the organization. Managers act as what? Disturbance handlers. So when there are troubles in the organization, some organizations, sometimes the community where they operate, they try to attack the organization. They try to cause problems. Managers are supposed to be there to what? To bring calmness. Sometimes the staff agitate. They are angry. They want the manager to go. We have been hearing it in the news every time. Last week, it was a Gihok. This week, I think it's about, um, is it the petroleum something, petroleum board or something? Um, the Honorable Freddie Blay, I hear that they said they want him to go. So when these things happen, you, the manager, you need to know how to handle the disturbance, the situation. Managers also are what resource allocators and they negotiate. They negotiate internally and externally, okay? Yes, because you have internal um, stakeholders who are the employees, then you have external stakeholders. External stakeholders are many, the government, the government agencies, the communities, the chiefs and their people, the shareholders, so many people, right? So many groups of, groups of people, the banks, your suppliers, all of that. Now let's talk about the skills. So managers, we know the functions, we know their roles. It means that if they can operate effectively, some skills are required of managers. And let me tell you these three skills. One is technical skills. By technical skills, you can't be a manager and you don't know anything. So a manager must have knowledge about what? A specific area or field. You must be an expert in something. You must be proficient at something. You can, you can be a manager and it is the subordinates who are teaching you everything. Now, don't get me wrong. When you join a new organization, they normally have a way they do their things. Even if you are the most intelligent, the most experienced manager, when you go to a new place, somebody must tell you what and how they do their things. That is okay. But after, manager must assume full responsibility. So that is where the knowledge that you have, your experiences, the proficiency will come to play. The next thing is what? Human skills. So the manager should know how to, rate, how to deal with people because managers get things done through people. Managers work with other people. You have creditors. You don't know how to handle your creditor. They will stop supplying raw materials to you. You go to the bank. You're always fighting with them. They will not give you credit again to run your business. So, so managers should have what? Human skills. And managers should also have conceptual skills because we have said that the organization is operating in very complex situation. The competition is tough and is complex. The situation around, the people you are dealing with, they are very complex. So managers should be able to what? To bring solutions to complex situations. They should be able to think through the data and come up with a decision that will help the organization, right? So being a manager is, is not a joke. Now, we can use the, the skills to differentiate between managers. But here, okay, here, right, at this point, the emphasis is that different levels of managers are required to exhibit more of, okay, different skills. So if you look at the lower level or the first line managers, 
we require them to exhibit more of technical skills. More of technical skills. Why? Because they are supervising the people who are not managers. The people who are not managers are the people who are doing the work. So the person is preparing a table, right? Producing a table. They don't know how to what, use the how to use the 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 hacksaw, the hacksaw or the chisel or the hammer. You, the manager, you should at least you should know how to what, help the person to use the hammer or to use a hacksaw or to use the jack. Okay, so at that level, technical skills are required more. You need more of technical skills. At the middle level, you need more of human skills because you are dealing with managers. These managers, they know what they are supposed to do. You are not the one going to teach them. Of course, you also have experience, so you can help them. That is fine. But you are not really going to teach them. Okay? You are not going to teach them. So it requires that you, have, you are able to relate properly, appropriately with these people so that they can do their work well. You provide them a lot of support, motivation, right? So that they can do their work well. At the top level, more of conceptual skills are required. Conceptual skills are more important at the top level because that is where the most, the difficult decisions are taken. So at that level, we require managers who can look at the difficult situation and come up with solutions. The complex nature of the issue and be able to think through and come up with what? Decisions, okay? So at different levels of management, there are different skills that are required more, okay, of the managers. Now, exhibit one, seven has some managerial skills, managing human capital, inspiring commitment, managing change, structuring work and getting things done up to managing logistics and technology. Now you have an assignment from here, okay? So this is your assignment, your homework number one, assignment one. So you are going to use a POLC and you will put these things under the appropriate POLC, okay? So you just look at this and you draw a table. So if you put B-O-L-C, if this one is supposed to be under P, you put it there. If it's supposed to be under C, you put it there in that order, okay? So class leaders, please take a screenshot, take a screenshot and then put it on your platform, okay? So next week at the end of the class, you will submit it to the class leader, hard copy, okay, hard copy. So arrange with it. You can do it before. I'm not saying that you should wait till next week, but next week is the deadline, okay? Next week is the deadline. So make sure that you submit it um, latest at the end of the class next week, okay? So you are, you are using this, okay? This exhibit 1-7 to do this work, okay? To do this work, right? Now, let's talk about importance of customers. When the, organ the organization exists to produce goods and services, for what? To supply to the needs of the customers. So customers are very important to every organization. If they talk to me. And Seth, is the assignment, are we just supposed to write this on the sheet of paper and you, submit you, this next week? You can type it or you can write it, but we want hard copy. So if you, if you type it, you have to print. If you decide to write with your hand, that is okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Okay. So customers are important because otherwise, what is the essence of the goods and services that I am producing? If customers are important, then we need to be strategic about what, managing the customers. We need to be effective about managing the customers. And that means that managers and their subordinates, their non-managerial employees are supposed to be trained so that they can handle the customers 
in the most efficient and appropriate way. Because if customers are loyal to the organization, it is because we are managing them well. We are, we are having a very good way of managing them. We are providing them the kind of quality service that they want. And that will help the organization to survive and to grow and to make their profit. If the customers are going away, our organization will die. We are not going to grow. Our profit margins will go down. So we need to put in plans that will help to what? To keep the customers. So in the field of um, marketing, one of the areas of emphasis is what? Customer satisfaction. Customer service is very crucial. Now, what are the things that are changing the way managers do their work? One, technology. So we're talking about digitization. Digitization is changing the way managers operate. And right now, it is so important. You can't do without it as a manager. You can't use the t -t traditional method, traditional approaches to manage people. Now, look at us. We are having our class online today. Why didn't we meet? Because we have infrastructure challenge, right? So to give other classes opportunity to meet in person, okay? We have to come online. Because of the technology, if the technology is not there, it means it's not going to be possible. If it's not going to be possible, it means that maybe many of you won't have had admission. So you see how technology is changing the way we manage. So the school will have to put the arrangement in place for this, okay? Then we also have increased emphasis on organizational and managerial ethics. Now, this is also very important and there is a big push that is going on currently. Now, it is about climate change. I don't know if you have been hearing it in the news. Everything is climate change. Very soon, they will even tell us not to breathe because if we breathe, there will be more CO2 going into the atmosphere. So organizations are expected to what? To put, put, uh, put in place proper practices. Now we are talking about green administration, green management. Everything should be green because we want to save the planet. All these things are affecting the way managers do their work. You are not expected to use too many papers. For example, don't use too many papers. Use things that can be recycled and all of that. Okay, then also competition. There is local competition. There is national competition. There is, you know, there is regional competition. There is international global competition. Globalization, internet penetration, going everywhere. So even the cocoa seller at the corner is facing competition. And so they have to be old. They have to be strategic. They have to know how to manage the work they do so that they don't lose. Otherwise, you will go out of the market. Your business will collapse if you don't have clear way to what? To compete. If you don't manage people well, you don't manage your resources well, your business is going to collapse. Then also changing security threats. Changing security threats. I was giving an example. Last year, at the close of last year, um, Data Bank, Data Bank asked their employees to work from home. And I got an email because they realized that some people were attacking some of their people in their branches because of this uh, debt exchange. Some customers were not happy. And when they go to the branches, they attack the people, they, the staff. So the company said, okay, let's work from home until issues are what? Stable before we will resume or we will open the offices. And other 
security threats, the economic situation. Are we expecting another pandemic? Are we expecting another COVID? We, are, we don't know. We are not sure. If you follow the news, a lot of things are going on. And these things pose some threat for businesses. So it changes how we manage. Why study management? What is the value of studying management? Why is it important to study management? It's about the universality of management, meaning that management is everywhere. For example, in all types and sizes of organizations, all types, meaning profit-making, non-profit-making, government, private sector, formal, informal, all types of organizations, all sizes of organizations, small, large, medium, multinational, they require managers. At all organizational levels, low level, medium level, top level, we need managers. In all organizational areas, marketing, human resource, MIS, ICT, finance, production, wherever we need managers in all areas of the organization. Then every location. So if you put your company at what to move far away in the north, okay, you still you still need what managers there. You have to send managers there. If you send your company, you go and put your company at Iceland, or you go and put your money at Antarctica, you need managers there. So in spite of the location, you need managers, okay? So you can see right in this uh, very nice framework. Now, we are just wrapping up, okay? We are just wrapping up. So there are rewards and challenges for what managers do, okay? So I'm going to leave this with you to go through um, the rewards and also challenges that are facing managers in terms of the work that they do, okay? Right, now, to summarize the class for today, first, is there any question from anyone before we summarize? Any question? 